When you first select the crop tool, you will only see a frame around your image. But as soon as you start cropping the image, you will also see the crop guide overlay, which by default is set to the rule of thirds. But you can change this from here in the options bar, and you can also cycle through them by pressing O. So if I press O, I will switch to the next overlay option, which is called grid. And I can go and cycle through all of them. And at the end, I will get back to the rule of thirds again. There are a couple of guide overlay options, like the golden spiral, where you can also change the orientation of this if you press shift O. As you can see, now the overlay actually turns around. It might be something that's easier to see if I have a darker background. So let me just create a black background. And uh, when I start cropping, you will be able to see that with Shift tool, I can switch this and change the orientation of it. You probably had this problem before when you create a crop. And let's just say I have a crop, something similar to this and I just decide to have a landscape format instead of a portrait format. Well, for that, to change the orientation of your crop but keep the same aspect ratio, you can press X on your keyboard. So that is a very useful keyboard shortcut. Once again, if I want to switch uh, from landscape to portrait, I just press X again on the keyboard. Another useful keyboard shortcut with the crop tool is H, which can hide the cropped areas. So it will only show you the preview of the areas that you will get after you accept cropping. So I can press H again to see the uh, outside areas. And if I go to the options here, I can also see the crop shield option. So that's the overlay, the darker overlay which we can see outside our cropping. If I turn this off, I can see them without it or together with that. And I can also use the opacity to uh, change the setting. And essentially this is what we have when we press H. So we can hide it completely or we can have a semi-transparent uh, version of it. And we can adjust the opacity to change this. And we can also change the color used for the crop shield. If we choose custom, we can select the color and then we can change the default settings. I think it's better to match the canvas most of the time. And also I quite like the 75% default option. So if you have all these settings, just remember you can press H to hide or show again the cropped areas. You might remember that the crop tool used to work differently in previous versions of Photoshop because now if you create a crop, you will essentially keep the crop in place in the center of the screen and you move the image around behind the crop. But if you want to use the crop tool in the classic mode, you can press P and then you will be able to use the crop over the image. So the image will stay in place and you move the crop around. So that is called the classic mode. And with P keyboard shortcut, you can switch between the new crop mode or the classic mode. And you can also find this option here in the drop down. So that's the first option there, use classic mode. When you have to match the aspect ratio and resolution and the pixel dimensions between two documents, you can actually use the crop tool for that. So in this case, I have this much smaller version and cropped version of the original photo. And the original photo is here on the right. So if I select the one on the left and I select the crop tool, I can choose from the pop-up front image. The front image option will sample from this image. So it will get the uh, width and height and also the resolution. And you can do this very quickly by just pressing I on the keyboard. So once we select this option, you can see under the crop tools options, we have the width, height in pixels and the resolution. 
And if I switch to the other document by pressing Control Tab, you can see we have the same options on it. So if I want to create this crop, I can first of all match the position or maybe have a different position for the tiger in the image. When I press Enter, it will be the same resolution and size as well. In case you're wondering, there are actually quite a lot of ways of accepting the crop in Photoshop. First of all, you can click on the commit icon here on the options bar. You can also press enter or you can double click on the crop area and you can also right click and choose crop or go to the image menu and choose crop from there. In case you have keystone distortion in your images, which means you will see a perspective distortion on buildings, for example. So the plane of the building wasn't parallel completely to the plane of your lens. In that case, you should use the perspective crop tool. And with this tool, what you need to do is to specify the uh, plane itself. So in this case, I'm going to use the plane of the building is going to make the crop like that and of course if I want to include more details from outside of the building I can hold down alt and shift and dragging the points further out from the building so I can include both uh, the cab and the building maybe move it a little bit further to the right and when I accept this crop I will see the building completely facing us of course, there are better ways of doing this as well. If we use the camera row filter under the lens corrections, we can also find the manual upright options. And in this case, probably the auto option will work well. So as you can see, it's probably a much easier way of doing this. But in some cases, when you have to get rid of keystone distortion and at the same time crop that area, then you should use the perspective crop tool. There are several ways of doing non-destructive cropping. First of all, probably easiest one is to make sure you uncheck the delete crop pixels. If that's turned on and then you create a crop and accept that crop, that will get rid of completely the cropped areas in your image. So it's better not to have that on. But even if you have that on, you can also turn your layer into a smart object. Or if in case you have more layers, just turn everything into smart object. And even if you have now the delete crop pixels option and you make a crop, you will still be able to see the original details of the image. So nothing's being deleted in this case. Another cool thing that you can do with the crop tool is to extend your canvas very quickly and easily. So in case I extend the crop tool, I can see it will be filled in with white color because that's my uh, current background color. But if I change that to any other color, it will use that color. So when I press enter, you can see I quickly extended my canvas and I can extend it in all directions at the same time. If I hold down Alt and Shift together, I can increase the, all the edges of my canvas. And also useful to know that if you double click on the background layer and you turn it essentially into a normal layer and then use this feature, then you will be able to extend the canvas and without filling in any colors, you will have just simply transparent pixels on the new parts of the canvas. In case you want to add a very specific amount of pixels to your canvas, you should use the image canvas size dialog box. But remember, if it's not important to have like a specific amount of pixels added to your image, you just want to quickly expand it in one or more directions, then use the crop tool. Last but not least, you can also use the crop tool to straighten photographs. So once I select it, I can either click on this icon here on the options bar or hold down control or command and click and drag a line. 
Now this line can be following a horizontal or vertical straight line in the image. In this case, probably this tower is the best one to align to. So if I hold down command on Mac or control on PC and draw this line, then I will get a nice straight version of the photograph. And as you can see, Photoshop will also make sure that we won't have any white or transparent pixels around the image. So it will reduce the crop as well to make sure it only shows original details from the photograph. So if I press enter, it will be accepted and I will have a perfect straight photograph. And that's all I wanted to show you about the crop tool. I hope you learned some useful techniques from this. And if you want to learn more, make sure you join me next time as well here on Touch Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.